वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स टू द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ आवर डिस्कशन ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ मोल कॉन्सेप्ट एज वी हैड स्टार्टेड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो लेसन अबाउट सम इंट्रोडक्टरी कॉन्सेप्ट रिगार्डिंग मोल कॉन्सेप्ट सो टूडे वी शैल प्रोसीड फर्दर राइट नो नियर स्क्रीन एज यू कैन सी इन द पिक्चर हाउ वी कैन रिप्रजेंट वन मोल इन वेरियस फॉर्म्स दैट इज बिन डिपेक्टेड you can see in that we can represent one mole in terms of particles one mole in terms of volume and then one mole in terms of mass now when it comes to representation of one mole in terms of mass this was something that we had discussed in full detail in our previous lesson so we shall proceed from this particular point the gram atomic mass of carbon the gram atomic mass of carbon is 12 gram you have studied about atomic mass so when it is expressed in grams it is gram atomic mass so gram atomic mass of carbon is 12 gram now the mass of one atom of carbon this has been calculated as 1.9924 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram therefore the number of carbon atoms in 12 gram of carbon we can find it out as to be equal to the gram atomic mass of carbon divided by mass of one carbon atom so this is equal to 12 gram divided by 1.9924 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram and that comes out to be equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 let's take one more example let's take the example of oxygen gram molecular mass this means when the mass of molecule of oxygen that is o2 as we all know that oxygen is diatomic so there are two atoms so atomic mass of oxygen is 16 and since it is diatomic so molecular mass should be equal to 2 into 16 that is 32 so when this molecular mass is expressed in gram that is gram molecular mass of oxygen that should be equal to how much 32 gram now mass of one molecule mass of one molecule of oxygen that is equal to 5 0.313 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram. Therefore, the number of oxygen molecules in 32 gram of oxygen. how can we find it out this should be equal to gram molecular mass of oxygen divided by mass of one oxygen molecule so that is equal to 32 gram divided by 5.313 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram 
and that is again equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. So this particular number is given a specific name. What is it called? This number is known as Avogadro's number. or Avogadro's constant. Now we can represent it in two ways. It is represented either as n with a subscript 0 or n with a subscript a. So Avogadro's number of particles of any substance are expressed in the form of a term mole. So now we can say that a mole denotes Avogadro's number of particles so before giving an example I would try to draw some similarities between the concept of mole and a very common term dozen there is a very close analogy or similarity between the terms mole and dozen a dozen always represents how many articles 12 a dozen always represents 12 articles. So they may be apples, oranges, pens, pencils, notebooks and so on. In a similar way, a mole represents 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 particles. So they may be atoms, molecules, ions, electrons, protons and so on. So that's the reason a mole is quite often called chemists dozen. So we can say that one mole of hydrogen atoms so that shall be equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 hydrogen atoms we can write one mole of oxygen molecules to be equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules we can write down one mole of sodium ions to be equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 sodium ions. So obviously a question arises what is the necessity of mole concept? We know that the atoms and molecules of any substance whether it's an element or a compound are very small in size. This is quite evident from the fact that 12 gram of carbon contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of carbon. This means that it may not be possible to count these atoms individually. However, they can collectively be represented as one mole. So this is a very convenient method to represent different particles. For example, if we write down number of oxygen atoms 
in 3 moles. So that should be equal to 3 into Avogadro's number that is equal to 3 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 and that is equal to 1.81 into 10 to the power 24 atoms. Similarly, the number of carbon and oxygen atoms in one mole of carbon dioxide may be written as Avogadro's number of carbon atoms plus twice Avogadro's number of oxygen atoms. So that shall be equal to how much? 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 plus 2 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms and that shall be equal to how much? 1.81 into 10 to the power 24 atoms. So we can see that 1 mole of carbon dioxide contains 1 mole atoms of carbon and 2 mole atoms of oxygen. So this clearly shows that mole is a better option out of the two. It is therefore preferred. Now there is sometimes a confusion in the minds of the students about molecule and mole. These are two different entities. A mole is an aggregate of 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of a substance or you can say Avogadro's number of molecules. So how is mole important? A mole conveys some very specific informations. A mole tells us in terms of the number of particles of a substance. It gives us information in terms of mass of a substance and it gives us information in terms of volume of a gas. So if we are asked to express the number of particles of a substance in terms of mole then we can write down number of moles to be equal to the given number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. So we can denote given number of particles by n and Avogadro's number is n a or n 0. Very quickly we can now collect some information regarding formula unit and formula unit mass. Now we have read that the oppositely charged ions that is cations and anions combine to form ionic compounds. In such cases the aggregate of ions is known as a formula unit. For example one formula unit of sodium chloride is constituted by one Na plus ion and one Cl minus ion. Similarly one formula unit of CuSO4 one formula unit of CuSO4 that will consist of 1 Cu2 plus ion and 1 SO4 to 
minus ion that is the sulfate ion so in the ionic compounds the molecular mass or molar mass is known as gram formula unit mass so thus 1 gram formula unit mass suppose of sodium chloride will be equal to mass of Avogadro's number of Na plus and Cl minus ions in grams. Similarly, 1 gram formula unit mass of copper sulfate is the mass of Avogadro's number of Cu2 plus and so for 2 minus ions in grams. Now I must like I uh, would like to tell you that in the ionic compounds we can use both molecular mass and formula unit mass. However, for the compounds in which ions are not present, the term formula unit mass cannot be used. For example, NaCl has molecular mass and formula unit mass equal to fifty eight point five units. But for ammonia molecular mass is fourteen plus three that is 17 units it has no formula unit mass now how to express mass of a substance in terms of mole. So elements have atomic mass or gram atomic mass. Similarly, the compounds have molecular mass or gram molecular mass. Both can be expressed in terms of moles. So for elements number of moles be equal to the given mass if suppose it is represented by m divided by gram atomic mass 